Welcome to Shakespeare FC, The Sonnets, a five-minute journey into the iambic abominations on life, love, death, and desire, with a smattering of nature and naughtiness from the mind of our literary epicure from Warwickshire, or, as you become more familiar, Uncle Will. I'm your host, Kari Marshall. Today, Uncle Will is looking back over a relationship. Fondly, at first, but something has gone awry. In the first quatrain of Uncle Will's 33rd sonnet, he very boldly, and very much in character for his epistles of Petrarchan prose, sets out a grand, or grandiose, comparison of his lover, the object of his affection, casting his gaze down over the landscape. He says that he has witnessed countless beautiful mornings when the sun like a royal eye illuminates the mountaintops, seemingly kissing the green meadows with its golden face, and, not to leave out the more liquid habitats of the scene, causing the dull streams to shine with his divine magic. Full many a glorious morning have I seen, flatter the mountain tops with sovereign eye, kissing with golden face the meadows green, gilding pale streams with heavenly alchemy. In the second quatrain, we begin to get a hint that all is not well in this picturesque scene. Uncle Will envisions a darkness beginning to encroach upon this beautiful vision, saying that clouds, the blackest of clouds, begins to move across the magnificent face of the sun with grim and grotesque gloom, hiding the sun's grand and gorgeous face from the world, a world now turning sad and despondent in the increasing darkness, with the sun then stealing away behind these clouds to set in the west in disgrace. Anon, permit the basest clouds to ride with ugly rack on his celestial face, and from the forlorn world his visage hide, stealing unseen to west with this disgrace. In the third quatrain, William now indicates that this is very much a metaphor involving his fair youth. He likens the youth to the sun, saying that it was he that shone down on his brow early one morning, William seeing his face as the landscape from the previous eight lines, lighting it up with a jubilant splendor. But only for a short time, a mere hour in fact, before the dark clouds, his lover's misdeeds, came and hid the brightness of the youth's essence from Uncle Will. Even so, my son one early morn did shine with all triumphant splendor on my brow. But out alack, he was but one hour mine. The region cloud hath masked him from me now. In the final couplet, there seems to be a bit of, if not forgiveness in Uncle Will's heart, then at least some understanding. He says that because of the love he feels for the youth, he cannot condemn or disdain him in the slightest. For if the actual sun in the heavens can become stained and obscured by clouds, how could he ever expect his son, the fair youth, to remain pure and pristine? Yet him for this, my love, no wit disdaineth. Sons of the world may stain, when heaven's sun staineth. Generous, and perhaps a wee bit self-serving. After all, this is coming from the man who is writing love sonnets, but not to his wife. Well, alas and alack, my friends, that is all we have time for. Join us again next time for another hopefully informative journey into the mind of Uncle William. I'm Kari Marshall. Farewell until next time. Shakespeare FC is a production of WGTE Public Media. You can learn more and download all episodes at wgte.org slash sfc or wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs>